You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Nagel and Knowles. Everyone has the right to feel physically and psychologically safe in their workplace. The multidimensional team of Nagel and Knowles will discuss the process for helping organizations with this growing problem that we face in our society today. From a simple lack of respect in the workplace to bullying to extreme violence, Nagel and Knowles will create a more healthy and harmonious atmosphere. So now, please welcome Nagel and Knowles, your workplace violence prevention experts. Welcome, everyone. You're listening to Richard and Claire Knowles of Nagel and Knowles, your and associates, your workplace violence prevention experts. You're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Good morning, everyone. Our show today is dedicated to the premise that engagement matters. It is a marker for preventing workplace violence. Indeed, engagement does matter. Because what you as a leader, a manager, an HR person, or a team member do or don't do matters in genuinely engaging with others in the workplace. It matters because there is a direct correlation to the level of genuine engagement in an organization and the corresponding level of civility and in turn the level of risk for workplace violence. Consider this quick snapshot. Research has been able to show that a deep culture of employee engagement can stem the number and the severity of workplace safety and or violence incidents. When an organization's leadership can embrace authentic engagement, are demonstrable in their caring, and when they hold all people and all managers accountable for this, well then they develop people strategies and they support training programs that will instill the very basic values of cooperation and collaboration. And when they consult employees about policies and procedures, processes, problems, then guess what? The positive workplace relationships are inevitable. And confident that their insights are valued, employees will then in turn flag the big concerns and they'll offer up solutions long before potential issues could become full-blown problems. They have a process to address their internal negative elephants and their toxic behaviors. Now, conversely, organizations that are autocratic and that ignore employees that do not have a respectful workplace, well, then the opposite is true. The seeds for workplace violence, whether it be incivilities, bullying, harassment, unprofessionalism, vengeful acts, they are sown right into the fabric of the organizational culture. And that's a no-brainer. So we'll be going in depth about employee engagement and why it matters as this show ensues today. But right now, though, Richard will share the big picture, the big picture view of Nagel and Knowles and what this whole 24-week series of our broadcasts has endeavored to do overall around reducing the risk of workplace violence. And then we'll return to addressing the importance of employee engagement and specifically how you can increase it for the better in your workplace. Because violence has no place in deeply engaged cultures, and that's where you want to be. The purpose of this show and all the shows has been to help you to build strong, robust, dynamical organizations that will fulfill your vision and mission. Organizations behave as if they're living systems, and we know organizations. When I was a manager of a big chemical plant in West Virginia, We eliminated a lot of the toxic behaviors and the people became more and more engaged. All kinds of improvements occurred, including earnings going up 300%. Engaged people help you to improve the business and everything gets better. 
Nagel and Knowles can help you build vital, sustainable systems and processes that will help you to create a strong, dynamic organization. These are exciting, robust organizations where the culture is safe, both physically and psychologically. These are living organizations where people can openly talk about the ideas and concerns with anyone. They can listen to each other. They learn together. This is the sort of a culture that's full of energy and creativity, where the organization and the people can become winners. Now, we're not talking about an organization where everybody is nice and everyone sits around holding hands and singing Kumbaya. These sorts of organizations can't survive in our competitive world. We're talking about building strong, vital, competitive, energetic, robust organizations where the leaders know how to lead effectively and do it. One of the major barriers, of course, that we've talked about is really having people engaged, eliminating the dysfunctional behaviors and people coming together to pull together to help the organization and themselves succeed. If you're worried about a workplace violence problem, if you're worried about hostile behaviors, if you're worried about the organization developing disgruntled, angry people, worried about someone maybe even coming in and creating violence, this is the show that you need to listen to. Nagel and Knowles and Associates is a collaborative, multidisciplined team with the passion and expertise to help you build safer, healthier work environments and eliminate a lot of wasted costs. We believe that everyone has a right to be able to work where they can feel physically and psychologically safe and have an equal opportunity to grow, develop, and become the best they can be. Our team members are Robin Nagel and Claire and Richard Knowles, and we bring over 100 years of practical hands-on experience and knowledge together to help create safer, healthier, more productive workplaces. Many of you have ideas and insights as well, so call us live, 866-451-1451. Seeking civility and reducing the risks of workplace violence are doable. It's a matter of will. If you want to do it, you can do it, and that's what we're talking about. More of the introductions that I'd like to talk about is to think about a penny in your pocket. If you look at the penny on one side, you'll see the Lincoln Memorial, and on the other side, a picture of Abraham Lincoln. Robin and Claire like the two sides of the penny. Robin addresses the physical assets, vulnerability, safety side and Claire addresses the psychological, cultural safety side. Robin's the point person addressing the active shooter situations, surveying the facilities, auditing your security and safety procedures, and reviewing your training on fleeing, hiding, and fighting. Claire looks over your HR resource procedures and careful hiring to develop respect, to eliminate sexual and other forms of harassment, to eliminate bullying, help you with the discipline system, and doing thoughtful, careful terminations. As you know, disgruntled, angry, vengeful employees or former employees account for about half the active shooter situations. So terminations need to be done carefully and thoughtfully. And Richard's like the copper on the penny, bringing the two sides together. It's critical that leaders honestly talk about eliminating workplace violence, creating an environment where it's safe to share information and talk together about this critical issue. These are the things that Richard can help you with. People must go into their workplaces and talk with their people and do what they say. They need to walk their talk. It's really good to be back with you live after some tough couple weeks where we had to use some reruns, and uh, we hope you enjoyed them because we know they were good to start with, so we know they were good second round. Today we're going to talk about a number of subjects, but they're all related to employee engagement, and to involvement. And Richard and I have been talking and writing and presenting this for years in many presentations with many groups. And these are all about the things about how workplace violence can destroy them because we know that the dots do connect. We're going to be talking about a Gallup Global Survey that highlights the importance of employee involvement in successful businesses. But right now, we are coming up on a break and we will be right back. You're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Please do stay tuned. 
Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'Ecole des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Nagel Knoll Show on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, we were just saying that we're talking about employee engagement and involvement and how it impacts, actually destroys organizations because of its lead to workplace violence. We're going to talk about a Gallup Global Survey. We're going to talk about toxic workplace, hidden elephants, the role of HR, and how Blocking engagement and involvement really hurts the bottom line. We'll also talk about violence and the dangers of marijuana. If people are smoking marijuana, their minds may not be clear, and they may not be able to function well, and that begins to block the ability to engage. We'll also share a study of three decades of school shootings and talk about the characteristics of those who murdered their classmates. And we'll discuss workplace violence prevention strategy. Treating people with respect and caring is the key that will open up all the levels of engagement and involvement. This is good for both the people and the business. Richard, we talked about this Gallup study of 2017 on the state of the global workforce. So why would they do a study like this? Gallup was curious about why the growth in domestic growth products in so many countries was stuck at less than 3% since about 2012. This level of growth is well below historic averages. They feel that both governments and businesses need to develop a climate where growth increases and more high quality jobs are created. Gallup found that about 32% of the working age adults across the 155 countries in their study are working full time for an employer. They define this as a good job. But they found that the productivity gains were not happening very fast and that the low level of employee engagement and involvement was a big factor in holding things back. Well, that is interesting. I see that their study also found that the businesses in the top quartile of employee engagement were 17 percent more profitable and 21 percent more productive than those in the bottom quartile. And they concluded that businesses need to become more employee centered and significantly engaged for more profitability, for productivity, and for growth to occur. They also found in their study that the conventional management mentality, which puts process ahead of people, blocks the employee-centered focus and prevents productivity growth. Managers need to grant employees greater input and autonomy to engage and empower them. We have been, Claire and I have been talking about this for years, so it's great to see that the Gallup study is coming up with the same sorts of conclusions. 
In their survey, they found that only one in three people worldwide have a good job. Those that are employed full time and by an employer. In the U.S., 64% of the men and 48% of the women are employed full time. This is the highest level of employment of people in the world. In the U.S. and Canada, Gallup found that 31% of the people are engaged in their work, 52% are not engaged, and 17% are actively disengaged. These are the highest levels in the world. We've been talking about this together, Claire and I, for years with many people. And across the country still, there's only 31% of the people who are engaged. Let me share what the definitions are for engaged and for not engaged and those that are in the middle, kind of a neutral form. Engaged employees work with passion and feel a profound connection to their company. They drive innovation and they move the organization forward. Think about somebody right now who you work with that's fully engaged. Now, not engaged employees are essentially checked out. They're sleepwalking through their workday. They're putting in time, but they're not, they don't have much energy nor passion that they will put into their work. Now think about someone that fulfills that role. And then thirdly, you have the actively disengaged employees. They aren't just unhappy at work. They're busy acting out their unhappiness every day. And these workers undermine what their engaged coworkers are trying to accomplish. Can you think of someone in that category? In looking across the 155 countries in their survey, Gallup found that more people are working against their employer than are engaged in helping them to succeed. Disengaged people actually working against the employers. No wonder growth cannot occur. No wonder everything is stuck. Or low. So engagement really does matter. And the waste of incivility can be eliminated. We're going to talk about a few questions here for Dick, particularly, I'm going to say it this way, Dick, we all know that from an HR standpoint that there will always be people, and people are different, and in the workplace, people need to learn to be able to be civil with each other, because HR expects that civility, and we should be hiring for that civility, and taking the time that it takes to get the best candidate for the job that we can and have done some solid, behaviorally-based interviewing in the screening process. Now, in your view, Richard, what is the price of incivility as it applies to workers being treated on the job, being engaged in a job, and employers benefiting in the long run? The price of incivility shows up with people disengaging, people pulling back, people not wanting to do things. This could cost as much as a third of your total payroll cost if your organization is really dysfunctional. That's a huge amount of money that's just being lost. In one survey we saw that covered 14 years, and they were asking people about having been treated disrespectfully, 98% said they had. Half of them said they were being treated disrespectfully every week. If we're treating people that way, how in the world can we expect them to put the best they can into the job? You know, managing incidents can be expensive, and it is said that at the Fortune 1000 firms that they can spend the equivalent of seven weeks, think about that, seven weeks a year dealing with the aftermath of incivility. And this is about incidents of rudeness, incivilities, unprofessionalism, let alone the impact of investigating bullying or harassment or vengeful acts. So what is a leader to do, Richard? Well, there's several things leaders can do. They can hire for civility as they interview people, really hire those who want to behave with civil behaviors and respectful behaviors. They can manage civility to make sure that people understand what the ground rules are and why. They need to teach people what does civility look like and how is it going to be in our organization. They need to set the expectations that we're going to have a civil workplace And they should not condone incivility with people misbehaving and talking against one another. So from an HR perspective, there's a sense that women experience more incivility at work, and especially from other women. And it's been said that assertive women who take charge at work may suffer the backlash at the form of being interpersonally mistreated. Assertiveness can be a signal of competition, and it also can be a very bad thing. 
We're coming up on a break now, and when we come back, we're going to go right into toxic behaviors, the elephants in the room that we so often do not want to address. You're listening live to the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, to the Nagel Knoll Show. Stay tuned. We will be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it french rastafarian baker chef ugmat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents born in mulhouse france he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations in classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to The Nagel Knowles Show on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This segment, we're talking about toxic behaviors, the toxic behaviors that create the hostile environment that you dread going to work in. And it's about those same toxic behaviors, which are the seeds for workplace violence. The Society for Human Resource Management, also known as SHRM, has a motto of better workplaces, better world. This is especially true when it comes to toxic workplaces and changing them into healthy, respectful workplaces. And I can assure you, this transformation can happen. As noted in a recent SHRM publication, Business leaders can improve employee engagement by ensuring that their employees feel included at work, feel safer at work, relative to the potential violence, either cultural or external, as well as through training and modeling the behavior that they want to see from their employees. Now, note the term behavior. And in his book, Safety Excellence for Business, My husband, the author, Richard Knowles, who's also the co-host today, he writes about culture as an outcome of all the interactions of people, behavioral interactions, meaning the words, the gestures, with each other, with supervision, with management, how we engage with the systems and processes that we have to work with, and how we carry out all of our everyday norms. It's how interactions happen. It's how engagement takes place. Is it authentic? Is it not? How deep it is? It all, all of these are the key cogs in the workplace culture wheel. And whether it is spinning for safety, quality, production, service, maybe morale or involvement or sustainability, it doesn't matter because the very same critical engagement processes need to happen. And note the word critical, critical engagement. Respect for individuals is the bottom line and the critical component of employee engagement. Now, engagement is easy to do. It is about leaders and managers being genuine enough to be holding meaningful conversations with all the people in their workplace all the time. The more connected we are, the more constructive dialogue and collaboration and inclusion there is, well, the more satisfied we are. We all want to feel part of something, feel appreciated, voice heard. How do you do as a leader or a manager? And do your leaders and managers know how to effectively engage employees? 
In 2013, I authored the best-selling book, Can You See Them Now? Elephants in Our Midst. You see, negative elephants, elephants are synonymous with toxic workplaces. This little book is a must-read for leaders, as it is as much about keen leadership as it is about the organizational elephants that take up residence in organizations and in work groups and in work teams. Whether it be the boardroom, the back room, the front office, or the factory floor, the very existence of elephants, those under the trub, under the rug, or un- they just mean trouble. You know what an elephant in the room is. It means that toxicity is present. And some organizations and work teams are trampled by their own elephants. Is your organization or work group being the best that it can be? Do you sense how much more effective your organization or work team could be if the people in it could just have better harmony, more civility, more cohesiveness, to all be moving forward together? Well, sometimes the elephants in the room can reach the point that people truly do dread going to work, yet nobody knows how to call the big elephant game, and it can get ugly. But we know that it doesn't have to be that way. So let's talk toxic behaviors for a minute. Toxic behaviors, or negative elephants, if you will, they can be seen. They show up, they repeat, they often fester. You can see patterns. There are signals, sometimes weak signals, sometimes strong. You can feel it. The question is, are you noticing them, or are you purposely ignoring them? So let's try this out. I'm going to share some behaviors now that beget or create the toxic workplace. I want you to listen and count up the ones that you know are in your workplace right now. So consider these. Blaming, complaining, nagging, ignoring over and over again, rudeness, backbiting, shunning, gossip, undermining, alliances, harassment, tearing others down, negativity, coercion, horseplay, snarking, threatening, yelling, demeaning, ridiculing, humiliating, isolating, withholding information or resources, retaliation, vengefulness, spoiling the good day, envy, open dislike or disdain towards others, power struggles, eye-rolling, bullying, withdrawal, temper tantrums in the workplace, anger outbursts, Unable to own one's 50% to take responsibility, even graffiti, littering, trashing the workplace. What did you think? Now, when you next go into your workplace, I invite you to do two things. One, start to notice these type of toxic behaviors and more that I just described. And ask yourself, What do you see happening again and again and over and over that is taking the team down a notch or two? Then, number two, the essential question to ask to eliminate these behaviors is this. What is it that has produced or is producing what you see? That is the penetrating question to answer that's going to make all the difference. Let me say it again. What is it that has produced or is producing the very things that we described that you see, because that is the penetrating question to answer and will make all the difference. So why is that so important? Well, to be able to lift up and to address your negative elephants, to be able to rid the organization of toxic behaviors, that's all important. Why? Because toxic workplaces, where there are toxic behaviors like I described, beget workplace violence, and it is a continuum. Workplace violence is a continuum. When you have incivilities that are not checked or called out, then that begins, begets more incivilities. It begets, it begets bullying, it begets harassment, it begets unprofessionalism. And when those aren't called out or checked, the continuum goes on. Soon you have vengeful acts, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can 
you can identify those elephants and those toxic behaviors and do something right now. When we come back, we're coming up on a break real soon. When we come back, we're going to tell you some of the things you can do about those. You're listening live to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is the Nagel Knoll Show. We'll be right back. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Nagel and Knowles Show on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We've been talking about civility. Toxic behaviors, elephants in the room. I just want to underscore that civility is the platform for organizational success. And you get there by engaging all the people in your organization with respect and authenticity. Leaders who have courage and the capacity to lead are what are needed today to address toxic behaviors. We don't need leaders acquiescing their role. Yet anyone can do this. Anyone can learn because authentic interactions and conversations with people, always with respect, provide the first step. We at Nagel and Knowles can teach you how. We have the processes that work beautifully for that. All of this begins with the role of the managers and the leaders. These people have tough jobs. There's a lot of things going on. There's have lots of pressures. They've got to deliver results. And often they're dealing with tough situations. But managers have to ask their people to help them to get better. Managers, if they really want to improve the effectiveness of their organizations and engage people, need to be open and honest and to take a stand it's unacceptable to have incivil behavior here in our organization. And then ask the people to help them also live up to the standard of being civil with one another. And we all make mistakes and sometimes we get short. We need to help each other. We need to have some resilience. We need to be working purposefully for the organization to become the best it can be. So making a statement, taking a stand, and asking the people to help you is a first very important big step for the leaders. And everybody needs to take responsibility for themselves and not just wait around. It's not okay for us to treat each other badly, to be cruel or incivil with one another. Everybody can be a leader. We can work on ourselves and we can get better and better. There needs to be some training put together as well to help people. What are the appropriate behaviors? We need to talk about that. We need to explore what is appropriate. This doesn't mean we don't have kidding, we don't have some fun in the organization, but it does mean we take the cruelty out of it. We're trying to build up people rather than tear them down. We need to talk about caring for each other and for ourselves. 
We need to talk about being sure we get enough rest, that we have a workplace life balance that's appropriate for us, that we're paying attention to how to help and support each other. We need to look out for each other to see what's going on. I have to watch out. It's clear to day, having a day where I need to pay particular attention to her and not just push her aside. It goes both ways. We all need to help each other. We need to be attentive. This doesn't mean we're weak. It doesn't mean we're bad or bossy. It does mean we care, and that's what we have to be doing. You know, when we go into an organization, one of the first things that we'll do is have a complete top to bottom across the board meeting with the manager and the team and the whole bit because we're looking at where are they really trying to go? Who are they? And how do they have to be together in order to move forward and accomplish the goals? Not what I said. How do they need to be together? It's those behaviors that we lift up. And in the course of lifting up the type of behaviors that are needed and that the organization to, can commit to, we also at the same time can be sure that we lift up the ones that really need to not show up again. Now, there can be hiccups, of course, and that's what we do. We put into process the further things that need to happen to make things work well. Even an integrated group training where they can create their own stop it process right in the moment when something happens so that the bully can't survive in that type of environment. And it's easy. And it turns out to be a very safe process that every person can learn to do because it's all about behaviors. And we can take a good number of lessons, can't we? Even from the school shootings that are taking on about what kind of behaviors were being shown there that just might have application to the very people we work with in an organization. Unfortunately, about half the active shooter situations that occur in businesses are done by the current or former employees. These are people that were around all the time. So if we're caring for each other and looking out for each other, we can begin to pay attention. In this survey of school shooters for the last three decades, they looked at 39 different people who were shooters. 22% of them had hinted to somebody that they were going to do this. They exchanged email messages. Some of them said, were bragging, 26 out of the 39 were bragging about having guns and being able to shoot things or maybe killing small animals. A number of them reported that they were being bullied. And when people get bullied and the bullying goes on, the resentment builds. And some of the people, 22 out of the 39, showed suicidal tendencies. So there are clues that we can pay attention to as we help each other, as we look after each other. This doesn't mean we're trying to not mind our own business, but rather we're caring and trying to be our brothers and sisters keepers. And being respectful of people and engaging with them so that we have genuine engagement because it does matter. Again, Nagel and Knowles have some processes to help your organization do the look-see, the internal look that you need, both in your culture as well as from the outside. And our, our um, partner, Robin Nagel, he's our security safety man. Robin will come in and help us talk about the situation where we have an active shooter situation developing. Now, when that happens, the fat's in the fire and things are moving away from just being un uncivil and disrespectful. We've got a big problem. But it's in this, also in this situation, people need to have a situational awareness. What's going on? Are there's a stranger walking in the organization? Is somebody doing something differently? Does somebody come in with a big trench coat like some of these students had done? That situ situational awareness. If an organization were to do nothing else, it is an alert element that people can really latch onto and understand, and not only use in the workplace as you. You interact with your people every day. Is everybody okay here? Are we all safe for this job? Is our mind in the game or are we not? And what's happening around us? What has changed? What's different? What doors unlock? What, what is what? From a situational awareness, Robin Nagel is the best. And he can do that special type of training. Robin also will help us to figure out how do we alert people to a situation that's developing and report it. You'll talk about the physical security of the facilities, for example, entryways and exitways. Do we have a good reception process so that people can be checked in and out properly? You'll also help with the ideas of escape, 
shelter in place, and a response plan. And he'll talk a lot about what to do when the police arrive, because when that happens, the scene, it becomes a crime scene and everything changes. You need to go out with your hands up in the air and no cell phones and that kind of stuff. So as you can see, all these dots connect. Toxic behaviors, hostile environment, being attentive to what's going on around us. We're coming up to a break. We will be right back. Please stay tuned. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Nagel Knowles Show with Richard Knowles and Claire Knowles, your hosts today. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and on TuneIn Radio. And for this segment, we're going to transition just a little bit, but it's still all related to engagement. But we want to talk about a difficult problem of marijuana and the impact that it can have in the workplace and certainly to our families. If people are not thinking straight, some terrible things can happen. The thing that we want to share is that marijuana impacts individual behavior. Individuals work in organizations. So it becomes even more important to be situationally aware of all the behaviors that are happening around you in the workplace. Engagement matters. Knowing our people matters. Knowing our coworkers matters. Respect matters. The presence of marijuana in our culture is growing and it's a very dynamical situation with so many things changing. At the federal level, it's illegal. However, many states have approved it and make it legal. There's also lots of use for medical marijuana and people don't understand all these things. An awful lot of the public dialogue seems to be that marijuana is a fun thing to use and we all can have a good time with it. Yet that's not really the case. As I look at the technical literature, it gets very, very serious about what can happen with marijuana. And when people have a mind-altering event or are not present, they're not going to be engaged at work, and they're actively going to be actually working against one another as they go into these things. And if someone unfortunately has a psychotic event, then that can be really, really difficult for everyone. Marijuana smoking is increasing quite a lot, and the THC, the active component in marijuana, is increasing because they're doing plant breeding and making it stronger. So it's gone from 10 years ago where it was maybe three or four tenths of a percent to now almost 30 percent in the cigarettes. These kind of things can lead people into unfortunate events. And for young people smoking every day, it can actually lead into higher levels of problems like schizophrenia. These are tough, serious problems at work, and nobody knows really how to measure for it or what to do about it. 
What is the threshold level of impairment if someone is exposed to marijuana? Even passive smoking can cause marijuana to be detected in our blood. Richard, what was your takeaway when you were reading or when you read the latest Occupational Health and Safety Bulletin, government bulletin, around marijuana in the workplace, where employers' policies should restrict marijuana use to the extent permitted by law? What went through your mind? The first thought that came to me was, that, boy, this is a tough problem. How do we, as leaders and managers, maintain a high level of safety and involvement in our workplace when we have very limited ability to control the use and the presence of marijuana in people? As I said earlier, it's illegal in some states. It's legal in many states for medical use. What is the impairment level? We don't know for sure. And that makes it really, really difficult. And how do I recognize that someone's on marijuana? Each of us will look at that and make a judgment, but is it consistent? Is it the kind of a thing you can make business decisions on? That's a, those ideas are not really available to us yet. It's a very complex, and different states have different regulations. So businesses with, across multiple states need to understand all that. It seems so counterintuitive to think that the legalization efforts just seem so precarious when at the other end of the spectrum, you want to have your task completed in a workplace with productivity and safety and clear engagement. As Claire is saying, this, you know, our goals are to create a positive workplace where there's civility and people can be openly sharing and learning together and helping each other. The role of marijuana confuses that and it makes it really, really tough for everybody. And this is not a moral thing that we're talking about. We're talking about how do we control, how do we have a safe workplace physically and psychologically? And how can we help people to be the best they can be? And how can we accommodate all these different dynamics around the use of marijuana in the various states and for the uses for medical treatment or for recreational treatment or just passive smoke because you happen to be with a group of people who were smoking. These are really messy, difficult problems and it takes an awful lot of reasonableness and dialogue with the people about what is it that's really required, what should we be doing, how do we do it, what are the standards that we need to maintain around safety and around civility here in our workplaces. These are difficult challenges, yet they're there, they're real. We shouldn't just ignore it. That begs that whole question, because what is your take around the whole connection of marijuana, this is from the literature of today, and those highly susceptible to abnormalities that may, perhaps in turn, incite behaviors that fall within the construct of workplace violence? How do we deal with that? What does that mean for employers having even tighter workplace violence prevention measures and greater screening? It's a good difficulty, isn't it? When we look at the statistics of those states that already have legalized marijuana, like Colorado and Washington in 2014 and Alaska and Oregon in 2015, the common talk was that this is going to reduce violence, it's going to reduce crime, things will be better. Yet, there are relationships developing that are kind of alarming. For example, murder rates have been rising in those states. From 2013 to 2017, they've gone up 37%. Aggravated assault has gone up 25%. Colorado is finding that the level of accidents in the highways with people who are impaired by marijuana is going way up. These are real things. To, Marijuana actually caused the accident? That's a big debatable question, but there are relationships where marijuana is more commonly used, where it's more legal. There are other kind of problems showing up, and what should we do about those? So at the time uh, that you were manager at the Bell plant in West Virginia, um, marijuana was not legalized. And could you just share maybe that one experience that really put you into concern, particularly because of the hazardous chemicals and the damage you could do in the environment? But This was 30 years ago, and actually it was more easy to work with these kind of problems because people, when they were had marijuana in their bodies, we said, you were impaired and you're out of here. 
That's changed now. It's got to be much more precise. It's got to be more carefully done. We're coming up on a break, so I'll just underscore that we're talking about this because marijuana does impact individual behavior, individuals work in organizations, and it's important that we all be situationally aware of all the ha- behaviors happening around us because engagement matters. We'll be right back. We're coming up on a break. You're listening to Nagel and Knowles at BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran's folk style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is Richard Knowles of the Nagel and Knowles Show. We're talking to you live today on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm doing this show today with Claire, my partner, who is a exceedingly important helper in this work. We talked a lot about workplace violence and all the concerns that occur and the damage to people in the organization. Let me tell you that when I was a plant manager and we were beginning to get rid of the violence and the sin civil behavior in our organizations and more and more people became engaged, it became a lot more fun. We became a lot more profitable Everything was going better. People began to grow and to learn and to prosper. And it was really fun to watch how people came on. And we still stay very close to many of those people, even though it's been many years since I was there. Because people grew and they thrived and they really liked it. There are things you can do to help improve it. We talked a lot about the importance of the manager taking a stand. Asking the people for help. Going into the organization and talking with people about the problem. Another thing you can do is get a copy of our book, The Guide to Reducing the Risk of Workplace Violence, The Absolute Essentials. This is a free booklet that you can get if you go to our website. And this booklet talks about all the different aspects of workplace violence and improving it to create a safe work and civil workplace. It's a book that will give you many, many ideas about all these different dimensions that help you to go into more depth. And it's free to you. Just go to the website, nagelknowlesandassociates.com. Scroll down to the comment box and leave your your name and the address to which you would like us to send this booklet. It's you free, and we will pick up the postage. Guide to Reducing the Risk of Workplace Violence, the Absolute Essentials. Everything from soup to nuts to get you started. It's a 66-page guide, so there's plenty of information in there that can be good food for thought and begin to help open up the conversations and the dialogue that is taking place that needs to take place in your organization. There's so much you can do that you can improve and help to make a civil workplace that is fun to work in, that is more prosperous, where people can learn and grow and develop and become the best they can be. You can do this. 
And in today's program today, we tried to connect the dots for the basics of employee engagement, because the more you engage, the more that you can eliminate the toxic behaviors and you can have the process in in place to eradicate a hostile environment if that's where you are. And the more you do this with authenticity, the more you put in processes that keep people involved and respected and their voices heard, the more you can do that, the better off an organization is. Because you can increase employee engagement for the better in your workplace. Why? Because workplace violence has no place in deeply engaged cultures. And that's where you want to be. Let's connect those dots. Behavior is a very important thing to look at, and you can see it, and you can address it. You can lift it up. And we can help you to do that if you need to. You know our website, dagelnolesandassociates.com. Civil workplaces where everyone is learning and growing are fun places in which to work. This is where people can thrive and grow, and that's what we want to see have happen. And we want to help you to see that not only will the people thrive and grow, the businesses will thrive and grow. We can reduce a huge amount of waste if we can become more civil and help one another and look out for each other in our workplaces. You're listening to Nagel and Knowles Associates, and as I mentioned, we're bringing you this live show on the BBM Global Network. Please go to our website, nagelknowlesandassociates.com, and scroll down to the contact section. Put in your name and mailing address, and we'll send you the book. We have a passion for this work, and we can help you get really, really better and help the organizations to thrive and glow, grow together. You're listening to us live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We will be back next week with another segment and another portion, another way to address the problem of preventing workplace violence. We'll be back next week. Have a good day. Listen each week for answers to all of your workplace violence concerns here on Nagel and Knowles. If you require help in your workplace setting, contact Nagel and Knowles at 716-622-6467 or log on to NagelKnowlesAndAssociates.com. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.